so thank you all for coming to our uh, PADs, which are Performance Art Dailies. Uh, these are sort of daily moderated panel discussions uh, between various artists who are participating in the festival and the festival collective who are organizing or other curators or other artists. So today, um, my name is Boyana Videkanic and I am one of the members of the collective, uh, 7A Lemon D. Um, and I have uh, an immense privilege and honor to moderate this panel uh, with two amazing artists um, who are sort of half here, half uh, on the, in the digital realm. And I'm just noticing that the Skype, of course, has stopped working. Sam, are you there? Of course. It was like cl cl crystal clear. Um, I noticed she was going in and out a minute ago. Yeah. She, was, she was there and then she came out. Okay, so um, Tanya Ostovich, who is uh, right here and is trying to set up the Skype, and Salma Salman, who is in Syracuse in New York, uh, who was unable to come because she was not allowed or she was denied an uh, entry visa to uh, Canada. Uh, twice, actually. So, uh, it was kind of ironic that the panel that uh, will be about um, migration, uh, women's issues, uh, uh, displacement, dislocation, uh, Hi. Okay, uh, no, you're good. Okay. We have you, yeah. We have you, I think. Okay. <laughs> so I was just introducing you, Salma. Okay. So I think that uh, at the same time that this is ironic, it's also quite pertinent. Um, I was just saying that you were denied visa entry twice. Um, well, actually, the second time we, we still haven't found out the results. So, um, but it is. Uh, I guess we made a, an executive decision, or Selma has made an executive decision, to not to bother with the visa anymore. So her performance will also be uh, taking a form of disembodied uh, performance, either via Skype or uh, instructional. So we'll see what happens. Um, so, as I was saying, it is my immense privilege to introduce these two women uh, who are both coming from the former Yugoslavia, from Serbia and Bosnia, uh, Herzegovina respectively, and have been involved with performance art, um, installation, video art for many years. Uh, Tanya has presented her work across the world on many international scenes. Um, including Venice Biennale, including uh, performance art festivals um, in pretty much every country in the world. No, not really. But <laughs> um, and she has so graciously decided to uh, take up some time and come to Canada. She was just in New York for a, an exhibition there at the Pratt Institute. Um, what, it was two weeks ago, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so she's kind of traveling quite a bit. Uh, Selma is uh, in Syracuse because she's doing her MFA, and she was also present, she's also presenting her work uh, in the Balkans, in Europe, and um, in the United States as well. Um, and so today, what I wanted to kind of um, do is uh, introduce you or uh, let the two artists introduce themselves to you, their work. Um, so each uh, of them will take a little bit of time and present about what they've done so far or sort of curate a little bit of, uh, about their work. Um, after which we're going to have a kind of a moderated Q&A with both of them and then we're going to have the um, uh, floor open to any questions from you guys. Um, so we're going to start with Tanya because she's here and then we have some PowerPoints that are going to be on this uh, slide projector and then Salma is going to go and I will be helping Salma to go through her slides because I'll be, um, I'll be uh, switching them. So um, uh, it is an immense pleasure to introduce Tanya Ostrich who will be presenting and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Boy, and 
Olga for introduction and uh, for the invitation to you and to Paul Couillard and uh, Giovanna oh, Householder and to um, uh, other um, very engaged uh, members of the Toronto Art Collective. Uh, for me, it's a, a big uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to be here and to exchange with you uh, about my work uh, as well tomorrow uh, when the live performance is going to take place. Um, I have to say I feel in this privileged position um, uh, of being able to be here. I dealt with my visa four months ago and uh, um, it took uh, quite some work uh, from all sides, um, but I got it uh, and uh, my colleague uh, um, didn't. Right. Um, so uh, I would like, uh, as the uh, Boyana has um, uh, planned this uh, panel, uh, uh, to have a topic of migration. So I've uh, chosen a number of uh, my works that uh, deal with this issue uh, to discuss uh, here with you. Um, so uh, I do work on a long-term projects and these projects involve performance and performative elements. Uh, and uh, I mainly work uh, in a kind of non-stage performance, but in the real life situation and the uh, real kind of political uh, context. Uh, as coming from the former Yugoslavia and being unpopular passport holder, uh, I did test it uh, on my own uh, experience. I did this uh, long-term research uh, entitled Crossing Borders Project. And uh, it did involve basically uh, researching um, a different, on different migration strategies that migrants have been forced to apply in order to transpass the borders. Uh, in my case, as I'm based in Europe, I in particular looked at the Schengen border regime and at the European Union borders that are extremely restrictive and uh, discriminative. Uh, so the, the first uh, work I've done in this uh, series was entitled Illegal Border Crossing and it consisted of uh, um, two times uh, crossing border between Slovenia and Austria that was at the time in the year 2000 before the Slovenia joined European Union Schengen border and European Union border. Just a few years later, in 2004, uh, when Slovenia joined the European Union, this border was not uh, existing anymore. So with the uh, uh, help of my friends uh, who came from Austria and picked me up, and uh, uh, with um, uh, local maps, uh, we managed to cross the border on the crossing that is out of use. and. We um, asked the local uh, villagers to give us the, the, the border code. Uh, we tricked them that we were actually um, just want to cross there because we don't want to go the whole way around. And at the time, I lived and worked in Slovenia. Uh, just the same summer, 2000, uh, I did a uh, six hours long uh, queuing action in front of the Austrian consulate in Belgrade, uh, where I was standing in regular queue with hundreds of other people, uh, accompanied with uh, document papers and um, guarantee letters, and basically um, queuing there. And at the noon, when the embassy closed down, I was simply too late. Uh, so I would have to come another day to, to queue again. That was the, this, this work. Normally it's not allowed to document it, but we have done that. Uh, another project that I also started in the year 2000 and that was running for five years uh, is entitled uh, Looking for a Husband with the EU Passport. And I, uh, I shaved my head and my body and was posing for um, so-called uh, marriage act. Um, it says, please send your applications to hottanya at hotmail.com. Do not hesitate to contact me with any further questions or details. And I did decided to use for this um, 
project uh, and aesthetics that uh, rather resembles concentration camp aesthetics than uh, a regular uh, wedding ad. Uh, if you go to the RussianBride.com or AsianBride.com, you might see that women are not much dressed, but they're always dressed and they are uh, bearing some kind of inviting gesture and smile. But with this kind of uh, uh, cold, uh, basically, uh, look, direct look, look at the people, I wanted to show that there was basically to critique this uh, fortress of Europe migration politics. And I did receive the exchange over 500 letters with people around the world. Um, mm. And they speak for themselves. This one is, for example, uh, was uh, basically uh, coming wrong. Uh, it says, hello, dear lady. I know this is a bit late, but I just now found your ad inside. Are you still in the market for a husband? I don't want to go into any great details if I'm wasting my time. John, 43 years old in Texas. So as you can see, I got residency from the United States and Australia as well as from around Europe. Um, in uh, November uh, 2000, uh, November 29, uh, 2001, uh, I did uh, arrange the first meeting with uh, uh, someone who became uh, uh, later a husband. And this uh, performance was uh, staged on the green field in front of the Museum of Contemporary Art in Belgrade. Um, in the background, it's a building of the Central Committee that was bombed in 99, so you don't see the top of the building. It's amazing. Uh, and this was also uh, transmitted on the uh, online. And there was a, a, a lot of audience around, but they, you could not see them uh, in this video. Uh, several weeks later, uh, we got officially married in the marriage office in uh, New Belgrade. So the, the project moved from the online uh, project into performance and now into the media of law. And um, uh, very important were the, uh, the, the signatures and uh, international uh, wedding certificate, marriage certificate, and as well the witnesses of marriage, they wrote a letter witnessing that what this marriage was about to give me rights to move and to uh, develop it as an artistic project. We went on a honeymoon to um, the place, you see, it looks like uh, has this uh, camp, camp aesthetics. Uh, with the European Union flag. And this was um, uh, one of uh, many uh, visas that I received uh, after I married uh, with a German man, uh, Clemens G. from Dusseldorf. So I moved to Dusseldorf and uh, was officially married for uh, three and a half years. And uh, in 2005, uh, I made a divorce party. There was no wedding party, but there was a divorce party on which I served the favorite cocktail of my former husband, Campari <laughs> Rauch. And this is uh, one of the installation views uh, uh, of this uh, work I'm showing now as an installation. You can see um, text about it and uh, uh, a number of um, application letters and in the uh, in the glass vitrine you can see a wedding book with some of the letters but also um, I did also interview other people who went through similar um, kind of marriages uh, also having uh, gay marriages or uh, but basically to support their right to move or people having really troubles with immigration offices because they were controlled and they were claimed to have a fake marriage so they went through the court a number of years so that's a part of this handmade uh, wedding book that you could see in here. I will jump over this one. Uh, I continued working with this uh, issues of borders and uh, of course uh, uh, Getting beyond this uh, 
uh, fact that I was um, <coughs> basically myself um, still, I could speak only from my position, that means uh, still white, European, right? I could not speak uh, from the perspective of people coming overseas and uh, um, being uh, um, coming from a very disadvantaged social background or uh, being uh, uh, denied visas because of the racism. Uh, so then I started also to look at this kind of stories. I made a documentary film in the deportation jail in Berlin uh, uh, with those kind of stories. And uh, um, this is, for example, one uh, work um, uh, that was um, from uh, about a year ago when the Balkan route uh, got uh, in a focus uh, because we had um, a huge number of refugees coming from um, Syria and surrounding uh, and also from North Africa uh, since the uh, European Union uh, biggest investment and biggest expansion of the annual budget goes to Frontex that is basically a private company based in uh, Warsaw in Poland that uh, has a job of protecting European Union borders uh, so uh, the people cannot access Europe uh, anymore uh, through the water and they are not allowed to board the airplanes. That's why they go through more expensive and more dangerous and longer uh, way to come to Europe. And uh, so um, as I was doing a workshop in Belgrade uh, in um, a park where the uh, people on the route are gathering to get information, food, and so on, uh, I did uh, copied from there also an actual information about uh, how to cross the border to Hungary from Belgrade and uh, in English and in Arabic. So this is here, I've been just drawing it in a gallery space um, in Berlin. But two days later, this border was closed. Uh, Hungary has built a fence um, with double, double razor wire fence so people could not uh, go through. Um, I'm here showing also work uh, entitled uh, After Courbet, uh, Origine du Monde, uh, that was uh, done in 2004. It was first published in the uh, Montreal uh, art magazine. Um, do you remember the name uh, in French? Was it Parachute? No. It's again. Was it Parachute? No, the other one. Yes. Um, Sylvia. Yeah, from Sylvie. Oh, it doesn't matter. So it was. Uh, from Sylvie uh, Babet? Yes. Um, it's a performance art magazine. Hey, Dad. Like, hey, Dad. Yeah. Inter, yeah. And, uh, uh, and so they asked artists to uh, give a comments on migration issues and uh, that's how I produced this work. And uh, I posed actually um, in a, uh, similar to the um, Gustave Courbet's uh, uh, famous uh, painting. Um, and, but I added this uh, EU uh, flag underwears and this work was a year later in uh, uh, shown like in December 2005, shown on rotating billboards uh, in Vienna. Uh, they wanted to have it there uh, because they were uh, um, celebrating um, Austrian uh, chair because the European Union has a rotating chair every six months. It's a new country. That was the moment when Austrian Prime Minister was overtaking the chair, and some of us artists. Uh, address this issue of uh, um, discriminative border regimes and this work um, has been censored, has been removed after 24 hours and there was a huge media scandal uh, going around that. But the media scandal was actually produced by the Yellow Press and uh, for uh, months uh, uh, it stayed in the uh, caricatures, in the uh, all kinds of Austrian and international papers. Uh, this one is kind of my favorite. 
Uh, on the left side, you see uh, Austrian politicians naked, and it's called art. And on the right side, they uh, have EU underwear, and it's called pornography. <laughs> because this work was removed for the sake of <laughs> pornography. <laughs> Uh, but it was in, uh, uh, remounted by a Forum Stadtpark in Graz, uh, an alternative art space. They thought it's very important to remount it and to discuss the issue of censorship um, there. Uh, another project I would like to um, show you is uh, also a, a work I've been working on for 12 years. It's called Naked Life. And, um, for this series of performances, um, I've been doing uh, research on uh, 700 years of systematic discrimination of Roma and Sinti in Europe. And uh, for each uh, performance, I did uh, a new research um, uh, predominantly focused on the local context of the place where I've been doing it. And uh, here you can see it. Um, the first one I did in 2004, and uh, I looked at um, reports um, submitted to the Uni United Nations Human Rights Conference, um, and I found these cases about deporting of Roma people from Germany, families from Germany to uh, Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, and Romania. Um, very severe cases in which uh, during the deportation people would get a heart attack or uh, kids would be traumatized and um, they would be sent into the countries where they're not safe. Uh, and so this work has been shown then as a video installation, as you can see, you have seen this room uh, made out of recycled material with diverse chairs. Next one I done in uh, 2011 in the Roma Pavilion uh, in the Venice Biennale. Roma, they don't have, they are one of the biggest minorities in Europe, I don't have a, their national pavilion. Uh, this year, that year, they were guests in the UNESCO office there and on the table between uh, amazing Roma artists, I was uh, uh, invited to do my piece. And there I tried to give an overview of the whole Europe. So I talked about uh, serial killings of Roma in Hungary, uh, about serial deportations from France, uh, uh, discrimination on, on the highest European Union level, and, and so on. Um, and, yeah, sorry, uh, while talking, I take off, so I read one case, I take off a layer of my clothes. And it goes like that. So basically, um, and they are very emotional because uh, you do not see uh, those people. You could see me taking off my clothes and um, being emotionally related to, to those cases, to those people, to their stories. And I'm also putting, showing some of their statements. Um, now I'm showing performance done uh, last this spring uh, in um, the Society of Advocates Hall in Aberdeen. And um, there I looked at the cases uh, in UK. Um, so Scottish Roma uh, and travelers, Irish, and also um, more recent comers, so Balkan Roma, they also have uh, a lot of those people uh, being also uh, discriminated in the United Kingdom. And uh, after this performance, um, I've been, um, we were uh, offering uh, food to the audience, we offered some soup, and then um, there was a panel with uh, Roma activists, uh, with local government, um, they were uh, not only uh, like uh, expressions of solidarity set up, but also some uh, initiation in the direction of activism. Um, for example, uh, Sonia, she's a, a Polish Roma, and she for the first time told her story in public, and her kids that were present, uh, they got to know about her. 
and her family discrimination story from Poland over Germany and the UK. And so she got initiated to become an activist. Uh, some weeks later, there was a 8th of April, International Roma Day, and she set incredible project in the elementary school of her kids. Um, and, and so this is very important for me that the works um, uh, spreading on, disseminating, connecting with community, that they're not just the, for art audience, they come and they stay there. That's my way of working. And now we are at the performance, Misplaced Woman, that uh, um, I will bring also to this festival. I've been working on this project since uh, 2009, I think. Uh, and um, it's been running as a, um, on different platforms, as a pl performance in the public space, delegated performance in the public space, uh, but also we have a, um, online platform, online blog, where the uh, contributions uh, from different locations, migration-specific locations, have been uploaded, and also people's stories, not only performances. So please, I encourage you, please go to the Misplaced Woman uh, uh, question mark uh, blog uh, at, the, at the World Pad Press and, and have a look. Uh, uh, so you could see here a uh, Gatteborg Airport. You can see here, uh, you can see here uh, a group performance at the uh, Gare de Saint-Charles at, at Marseille. Uh, you could see performance in Sweden, Norway, um, tram station in the city, and uh, so on. So with this project, I look uh, into this um, different issues related to the sensibility of, uh, uh, of a woman, uh, of a gender, sensibility of gender in the context of migration, uh, and uh, depriva deprivation uh, in the situations of crossing borders, uh, in the situation of being checked, and, um, and into issues of security, public space, and so on. But if you read some of the stories, uh, it's quite nice. Right now we have a very nice installation in the Pratt Manhattan Gallery in Feminism is Politics exhibition in New York. And there, uh, there are some videos, on the, some, some photos, and as well some uh, stories printed, um, even a sign uh, uh, done in an embroidery misplaced woman sign that has been produced in one of the workshops because I'm doing that also as a workshop with people from different backgrounds interested to, to try themselves out in a performance in the public space and so on. And this is just a small uh, um, one last work uh, I would like to mention. Uh, it's entitled Lexicon of Tanya Ostovich, and there I looked at uh, my own migration. This is Europe, and here at the migration of uh, 30 women uh, and girls, so the women of different generation, women of different uh, nationalities, different social backgrounds, having all the same name, Tanya Ostovich. So I looked at these name sisters, I got in touch with them, I spent some social, I shared some social time with them, I created some creative workshops with them, and I also did this drawing map where those migrations are marked, and the year, because we had this uh, uh, terrible war in the former Yugoslavia, and uh, the key migration years were 91 when the war started, 98 when the war finished, and then uh, also like a hunger, hunger migrations uh, after the transition period uh, from socialist to capitalism in the 2002, then 2012, and so on. And this project goes on. This is what I'm going to be working mostly next year. Yes, thank you so much.
So, uh, Selma, you have the podium. Your uh, work is up. Are you good? She's frozen. She's frozen. She's frozen. Yeah. I don't know why. It was so beautiful. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Are you okay now? Something is giving us trouble. Again. I can try to. I can try to turn on and off, 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 off if you want to. I think she's going to talk. Call it out. I can just use a chance to mention because I forgot to show this also staged performances in which I tell the stories of uh, getting married and uh, the stuff I forgot to show this performances. Mm -hmm. I forgot it's mainly performance well with the uh, crowd. Yeah. Now I yeah, it's still, so yeah, there's some problem with the uh, Skype, so. Sometimes when the video's off, the audio will have high quality. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so right should I maybe turn off the video and then you can we can listen to you? Uh, I'll flip the I'll flip the images as you go. And you can say what you're showing. Yeah. We can try that. Okay. Let's try <laughs> that. Okay, I turned off my video, so maybe that works. Okay. Okay, no, she yeah. needs to turn She's off I think you journey. have to turn off your video as well, maybe. No, it's enough that you turn off. Uh, no, no it's enough that you want to go. She's, She's cutting you off. Ah. She said, can you, me? Yeah. Can you hear me? In the high? <laughs> okay. That's a little better. Okay. Wait. I don't know which one I'm talking now. <laughs> no, 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 we will tell you. We will tell you what the slide is on. Now the okay, slide. great. I just, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank Brianna for coming me to participate in the in the festival, and I'm very sad to be with you now there. And it's my pleasure to be in the discussion with Tanya. So thank you very much for this. So as Boyana introduced to me, like my name is Thomas Salman, I'm here with you grad student. So I'm an artist and uh, um, like I would like to say it attracts me like escapism not from my identity and to actually say things which I want to share with people. I would like to start with my first work called Aroma Priming the Flag. So just a little bit back from um, me, if I, I'm an artist of Roma Martin, so I have to do a uh, complex work of Roma people. So I don't know, like, don't know how Roma look like, but this is kind of an uh, image of that flag. So, we are not our own state, but we like to say that we have the whole world like our home. So with this we are trying to our flag alive and to make kind of monument. So as you can see here is like a sky and that's a symbol of our blanket. It's shaped like that. So and the green color is a, um, is a symbol of the of the concept that we, we are all exist all around the world. So in the middle is uh, actually red, but in this performance, um, uh, I'm mean that we live in um, uh, the tribal and, uh, and, and, Summer. and, we try, we try, I love. We, uh, I can hear myself. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. If, if you don't mind, I just try to summarize. If there was not clear, the uh, Salma is artist that has a background of uh, uh, Roma ethnicity uh, from Bosnia, and uh, she been trying to perform. Here she was performing the Roma flag. In the middle of the Roma flag is a a, a wheel. And she was being this wheel, and she's talking about the symbolics of the sky and the um, green and this wheel. Are you there? Sama? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. 
We all understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, better. Better, much now better. It's way better. But the problem is, like, I can hear myself and I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. It's very good. Just go okay. on. Okay, let me try again now. Yeah, okay. okay. Just go so, on. The thing is that I want to see the red wheel represents our movement and, and, and our struggle. So, in this work, I wanted to perform the Romani flag, struggling to perform perfect cartwheel. So, I wanted to make this aerobic. Star, but the thing was that I didn't know how to make it. <laughs> so despite failing many times, I dust myself off and I tried again and again. But the, the important thing, I, I tried to make this for uh, the same thing that I discriminated. Okay. So another work should be the talking to Jitia. prejudices of the Roma woman. So as a member of this community and an artist, I wanted to provoke the audience and put attention on discrimination, stereotypes of female body in general. So the, like a Roma women is actually perceived to be very exotic, erotic, and the, it's sometimes too, a little bit too much danger for too much birthday. So, and there is like a big fear of uh, America that if a gypsy woman will look into your eyes, she could doubt you or curse you. So I decided to play with this and I provoke audience. And I was telling them like, if you look into my eyes, everything can happen. And I cannot guarantee actually that something cannot happen to you because this is 21st century and still believe in those those stereotypes and which it is. Hello? Yeah, 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 yeah we're, we're listening. Good. Yeah. This work about the, like, about the, it's actually the part of the first slide. Yeah. And no. Uh, uh, some, yeah, we're at 16,000 parts. Okay, this is it. So I need to mention that for this work, which is called 16,005, I got a press for the best star. Uh, I was near for residency and I'm very proud of this. So this work is the I just want to do cool. Recall and she starts again with this piece. <coughs> it wasn't so perfect before anyone came in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What if she like types and then someone like speaks for her? <laughs> I don't know if that uh, would take hours. Yeah. Is it possible for it to call someone's phone and come around to the computer? Hey. And I don't think so. This is now what I it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like you, you start okay and then it's, uh, it starts. Just doing start like, from the 16,000 parts. Yeah, we, you were starting, like, that, that's what we've heard 16,000 parts. And so. So, okay, the thousand part is the piece, the documentary, which actually represents communication between relatives. 
So in this mo in this country, I was um, recording uh, uh, like my father and brother how they are discussing uh, discussing about money and the economic issues. So the most important thing about this work is that I de destroyed prejudice against drama because when you watch this documentary, you don't, you don't think about the nationality uh, of these people because they can give up money. Be a creation, they can be uh, any. So, another word? Is that another word? Yeah. Yeah, I. So, salt water. Is there salt water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. So, this work is actually one of my favorite works, and it's about my mom and her first contact with the sea. So, my mom's big wish is always to see for her, for herself if the salty butter, if the... I, I can hear myself, I'm so sorry. No, you're good, go on. you're good, go yeah. on. Okay, so this is actually, well, my mother's past. So she was born in Kosovo, and at age, at age 13, she was married for my father, who was 17. So she immigrated in, uh, in Bosnia. That time was former Yugoslavia, so people could travel from one country to another. So, uh, but after the um, after the war, my mom was kind of stuck in Bosnia because she didn't have uh, any any to go in uh, in any other country than in Bosnia. So, but during my childhood, she would always uh, tell him, but actually to go see, to see, it's really little like she heard it was, and she still not to go to the room. Okay, we're yeah. losing you again. I'm gonna uh, hang up and then we'll start up uh, the conversation. I, I can say because I'm, I was uh, talking about this work uh, in, uh, in my last performance, uh, while you're trying to get her. Uh, so the mother, uh, with age of 13, married her husband, age of 17, and moved for that reason from Kosovo to Bosnia. At the time of Yugoslavia, this was one country. This marriage was not state recognized as they were minors. And uh, once the Yugoslavia was broken in parts, um, uh, yeah. uh, she stayed uh, without documents. Yeah, so we're just uh, explaining the con that mother yeah. did not have so, documents to travel. And she was without documents for 47 years. Yeah. And I can read the, the text there, but, but do you want that? I, um, think, I can say if you want, Selma, just uh, about this work. Do you want me to say that? Because we did yeah. this a few a week ago. And, uh, and this, uh, then. Uh, it was a, a really hard work, a big administrative procedure. Uh, Selma fought for her mother. She received the documents. She received her first passport. And then she was allowed, she was possible that Selma takes her to the seaside, that she finds out herself if the seawater was indeed salty. That's the video about that. And then <coughs> Selma filmed her mother experiencing this first contact with the seawater. Can we hear you? Hello? Can yes. you hear us? Now we see your mother. Uh, we okay. see your mother uh, and it says, oh, water is salty, fui. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, that work is actually about her struggling to, get the, to obtain the citizenship of Bosnia. So at uh, 47 years, she received her passport and then her identity was visible. Okay, do you want to go to the next one with your performance in Buffalo? It's here, actually, because like it will take so much time. You want to end here? We can finish here, it's fine. So, um, okay, so maybe we can touch on those um, in, uh, in our conversation, okay? So I'm going to turn on the, the video and we're going to try to have a conversation.
conversation now. I'm going to turn the video towards the uh, audience. So you can see. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. She should maybe turn the sound down. Although she was on her own, she could just now on her computer. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, so, suggestion is maybe you should turn the sound down at your computer, at your end. Uh, she won't hear us. She won't hear us. Yeah, she won't hear us. So, I'll just do no. I think it's okay. Okay. Okay, so um, with all the technical difficulties, uh, or despite of it, it feels like a performance in itself. Um, and uh, we're going to continue the conversation um, and maybe ask you some more questions about your work as we go. And <coughs> hopefully the Skype will work. Uh, yeah. So I want to kind of um, open this discussion by, again, uh, sort of, um, thank you, by um, talking a little bit more about this whole idea of the, or this whole ordeal of the visa, because I think it's at the center or at the heart of your project and in many ways Selma's project, um, and sort of talk about the, um, the hierarchy in the arts and the ability of some to travel and others not to and how that impacts your work like what are you and how do you see this idea of moving around uh, or inability to, to move as part of your work uh, and have you thought about it um, this is goes to, to both Salma and Tanya um, and, and then also there's the question of race as well, uh, how you are perceived um, in different parts of the world. So when you're in Europe, you're perceived as one thing. When you're in the Balkans, you're perceived as something completely different. And then in North America, uh, your identity changes yet again. So, so maybe, uh, who do you want to start, Tanya or Selma, do you want to say something about that? Um, being here of you being a hurt and uh, it's hard for you what was like being a just and stuck here at eating more networks people like and didn't have kind of the concept and the idea was for most people so the question I was received were like if I would for example my work like perform the wrong flag or don't look in I did not understand what is Roma, like, oh, that, like, Roma people are actually from Romania, or this Roma, like, city, but, that, like, that's big, for me, like, big people with that, you know? Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's, you know, for Europe, it's actually normal to talk to my shoes. Here, for me, it's a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, for me, it was very important to um, analyze uh, in my work uh, and to go both personally through experience of uh, um, like economy and gender in the context of migration and to look also uh, at different ways of traveling because uh, when we just fly around as business people, uh, in the airplane, in the airports, uh, visit this duty free and this airport cafes. It's a really one way of traveling. And once you get on the ground, and once you uh, see people that are not allowed to board the planes, once you see people that are walking uh, over the borders, they have to cross the borders, uh, non-registered. Um, it's a completely another way of traveling, and. Um, I think, for me at least, it was uh, important also to uh, think through this uh, um, different class of traveling. And uh, it's been also in, uh, in Europe also quite some artists working with a deportation class as an issue of like a deportation class. They've been uh, um, 
airplane companies taking people, deporting people. And uh, um, for me, it's not just an issue of visa, it's really an issue of uh, uh, border regimes and uh, how the economy of, of this has been arranged. Um, I'm also going um, from time to time to the migration conferences and where uh, activists, theoreticians and artists gather and uh, uh, we also try to, to see, organizing different groups, working groups and tackle different issues and uh, at, at one conference in last autumn I was with a, like a feminist group and we discussed about this issue of like, uh, for example in this migration that is now a big issue like a Syrian and uh, North African uh, in Europe uh, we have a, a very visible, um, like a predominantly young man uh, or families are coming and it's very, very rare that women come alone. And uh, there is also this issue of economy because uh, women not uh, having uh, financial uh, possibilities to cross the borders to pay for this very expensive border crossing services uh, and to also being more exposed in the context of migration, like uh, in the terms of like uh, sexual violence or things like that. And so I started a campaign uh, uh, called the 30% 30 uh, 30% uh, 30 reduction uh, for all products and services, including border crossing services to women, because women earn on the same positions. Um, uh, approximately 30% less than their male colleagues. And I do this, offer this also on my website for the people buying my books or it's symbolic, but it starts. And with a feminist party in Germany that is extremely small, it just actually happened like a one week ago, uh, the German government brought up the law that, that they have to, the, the companies have to uh, give up transparency of income in order to pay the same people at the same positions. But of course, when we talk here about uh, people in the context of migration, uh, they are not uh, covered by this. They're people that are not covered by our democratic laws. They're people uh, that are excluded of all of these privileges and all these um, um, improvements uh, uh, that we do in uh, our societies. So, Sama, I want to end so I don't want it to end, but um, she's sorry that it's getting chopped off. So um, she's gotten disconnected. Um, I mean, yeah, she's not online. So I mean, she's online, but she's not. We're not skyping. So um, I'm going to see what's going to happen. But let's continue the conversation and see what she says. Um, and I think that's what's really important to me is to listen to her, what she just said about being perceived differently because in North America, and this was her first time living in North America in the last uh, year and a half, um, she's completely seen completely differently than she is in Europe. And, and this kind of tension about her identity and how she places herself was an important part of how and where her work is going as well um, as an artist. And I think that this visa, um, this visa issue with her that she was refused twice to come in, into Canada had... But this um, is not surprising. Also, I'm sorry, yeah. I have a, a, yeah. a colleague. We, we were doing last Monday in Berlin a, a huge Roma evening I curated. So the people I was talking about in my Naked Life performance, they also had their own hip hop music musicians, Roma bands, playing their performances, and they've been uh, many times deported and things like that. So yeah. one of the Roma yeah. photographers that was a part of the program, he told me uh, he respects Selma's work a lot, and he told me he was also a number of times refused visa to come to Canada. He was supposed to work. There is a large Roma community here. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to do workshops with his kids. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's not that uh, they are not familiar. They yeah. are very familiar here with yeah. the um, um, pushing Roma out of the society or keeping them out of society somehow and refusing visas to Roma artists. This is not uh, by chance. Yeah. No, and, and I mean, uh, absolutely. And you know, the fact that we had to uh, submit the visa application twice 
uh, 3MPs have I I intervened to ex expedite the, to expedite sorry the visa and we couldn't get it so there's you know there's there's those layers of, of kind of uh, bureaucracy that were placed between her coming and uh, um, to the festival so um, and one of the reasons why I wanted you too to be at the festival is that you to very specifically speak to uh, both of you speak to these ideas about race and borders and crossing and the difficulty with all, all of that and it, that's why I said it was kind of ironic that this whole thing happened um, but another thing that I wanted to ask is the also uh, the amount of contextualization that a lot of these kinds of things have to happen in. Um, what I've kind of uh, encountered as a, in my work as an artist, but also as an art historian, is that in a lot of the ways we have to kind of explain the context. Spend a lot of time as artists explaining the context in this which in which this happens because. Um, it's not known as much as some, maybe some other issues. So I wanted to ask you about this question of context and contextualization and how much do you choose or not to choose to do it as an artist? Or do you feel, um, and Selma, I think you can hear me now, um, and how much that, that is you know, uh, part of your work. Selma, did you hear me? Did you hear me have a question? Me? Yeah, yeah, did you hear my question? Okay. I think that uh, Yeah. I can't believe it. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. So about the cost, I think that my work I think is very important. And uh, this is the way how I actually approach to almost every my work because it's kind of very personal and I already have a concept even kind of shooting the work, mm -hmm. if I can yeah. see. Yeah, but no here, like, I, like studying here at Syracuse, I face like some problems about the kind of people would say that kind of like the form should be more kind of visible, the more important than the cost, but for me it's like opposite because I think the cost should be a little bit more, mm -hmm. I don't know, stronger. Mm -hmm. and, like, if you have con, um, bring that to be Well, this is what it's really interesting what she's saying about the content and the form. Um, and I, we had a conversation just earlier, Tanya, uh, just a day ago about that and about the this idea of, aesthet uh, of aesthetics yeah. and politics and how they feature in the work. So how aestheticizes a work or um, polished, if you will, and how important it is to have a uh, kind of uh, an activist approach to Yeah, work. but this is interesting. If we talk now as educators, yes. she was me, and she is in the position of being a student, yes. and how we work with our own work, our practices, and how we uh, address our students in the direction of uh, uh, how much attention they pay uh, on form and on uh, uh, on uh, uh, context and or content. Uh, I think it's a matter of taste. Uh, I think that the both are very important, but it's a the the, the artist is the only one who can decide uh, to which he's giving more space. And even what is sometimes not recognized as a form or aesthetics might be exactly the one. It's just an aesthetics that doesn't look uh, camp or it doesn't look. Uh, Overdone, right? It's a, it's a, also a, a, a decision. We all make aesthetical and formal decisions within our work, even they look uh, bare, even they look there is no uh, form and aesthetic. So, um, I, I think so. But to go back to the question of context, uh, for me, it's very important, uh, and I always uh, contextualize my work in the frame of the, uh, like. Uh, if I can, in the frame of event, in the frame of evening, uh, in the publications, I pay a lot of attention on this. Uh, I find it uh, very important that the work is getting a proper reading, proper political and theoretical context, uh, that uh, so they come in a way in a package, or sooner or later, you know, um, 
uh, there comes this uh, uh, theoretical uh, contextualization of uh, what I'm doing because for me uh, that's very important. Um, so maybe because of all this technical stuff, maybe we'll just open the conversation to the podium, or not the podium, to the audience, <laughs> and you can ask, uh, you can join in with your questions and uh, continue from these sort of initial thoughts. So, Tanya, earlier you talked about the medium of the law as, as kind of like a medium you're working in as an artist. And it seems to me there's three different levels. One is just bringing awareness to other people of what the laws actually are. Then there's this whole context of playing with the laws and seeing how you can manipulate them to your own interests. And then I'd say there's maybe a third level of activism of actually trying to change laws. So it's sort of three different levels. And I was thinking of that in the context of um, you know, we're talking now about art and form and content and, and, and why it's important to you to enter this through the frame of art as opposed to say, just deciding, okay, I'm an activist, these are my issues and I'm gonna be an activist as opposed to putting it in specifically an art context. If that's a that's a very good question, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, as I'm working in this uh, issues, uh, really um, uh, over 20 years, and uh, um, sometimes I have a feeling of like, uh, oh, we are not getting anywhere in the terms of like uh, uh, changing policies or things. But uh, this field of work is maybe like a cultural activism and arts, so uh, fields in which you. Uh, getting access to the people um, that would uh, normally not maybe look at certain um, activist uh, uh, um, meetings, for example. Um, uh, sometimes uh, it's not that I'm having like this as a kind of uh, final, uh, how to say, this is where I want to get, but uh, there is also need to for me, a uh, kind of emotional, deep emotional need to process certain issues, and I can process them through my work, through my artistic practice, uh, to to deal with those uh, issues. And um, I see the only way to do it through arts, um, and um, so wherever it, it leads, uh, but also trying to exchange with activist groups and to, uh, go through the fields, uh, as we said, and. Um, both artistic, academic, and activist fields, um, and that comes uh, brings good feeling, you know. Sometimes with this all these ex exchanges and uh, also getting feedback of people um, um, from different contexts. Uh, I also really fancy on doing interventions in the public space and the dental, or just passing by, just see something, they wonder, they don't know if this is a performance, so they wonder what happened to this person, you know? They start thinking, or they think, oh, I know someone who went through something like that, or I went through that. So there is this also a very subtle way of like uh, bringing issues up. It's not always uh, kind of programmed on something, but it did happen that, um, also, my work became very referential in theoretical field, uh, like a poli even political or social theory, like writing about certain issues, and then this kind of art practice is kind of example for something, because it kind of amplifies the reality that this is so terrible, but somehow, unfortunately, through the bizarre media reproduction of uh, violence and racism and uh, the injustice, we got used to it, right? And then uh, if you are really uh, working uh, with your art, artistic practice with this, it does still manage somehow to trigger people, to uh, produce a, um, like a feelings that we are uh, normally um, separating of. And I have to say, I'm also working with a decolonial uh, aesthetics group theoretical and artistic, and they uh, uh, also like speak about this um, need to uh, also like uh, 
produce the feeling so that the, the solidarity could be built around that and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he was the next. Yeah. Um, you touched on this a little bit in, in what you just said, but um, part of it was you said everywhere you go, depending on where you are in the world, people react to you differently. Um, Particularly in terms of like your performance, right? Like, do do you find that like people, like audiences in different places where you perform, give you a different type of reaction dependent on like you know the location? Yes, of course. Depending on the social context, depending on the energy of the place, depending on uh, sometimes uh, you do the same piece, like this naked life piece. It was never the same piece, but sometimes as an artist, you know, like I stand on the table, I can see people, I can exchange the feelings, you know, I could cry for hours during the piece and after, you know, and and sometimes, you know, um, it's also like a stage setting. If you're like a pushed back and the people are in dark, I mean, it's just a bizarre, you're like on the stage, you don't relate to the people. It's also the matter of uh, setting, but also the matter of people. Some people are more uh, open-hearted or open-minded to to embrace your performance, to embrace what you're bringing to them. And sometimes the people are more distant and like uh, thinking, what's this going on here, right? But every performance artist knows its performance is not just about you. Uh, it's really, uh, uh, in French language, there is this participé uh, performance. The audience uh, is participating. It's, uh, uh, it's not something, uh, of course, there are people who, who build their performance on this um, excluding of audience, like uh, uh, Leibach, for example, like uh, they play applause, uh, you know, they don't want to deal with the people. Uh, but it's, uh, it's another decision. And not only with the audience, it's also uh, many times uh, performances are including other, other participants, right? They are also other actors of the same performance uh, that you uh, use as a material, like in those pieces. I did a, a series of performances uh, that analyzed the um, power structures within art system and gender power relations within art system, and I did performances with the art curators, like erotic jacuzzi bath, in the exhibition opening, performing escort to a director of Venice Biennale. It's, it's like a, also how these people behave, you know, if they are getting along, if they are performing, if they are um, pushing you away. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. It's quite, that, that performance is all about that, I think, these negotiations. And, interactions. Mm -hmm. uh, my question was almost exactly the same, which is interesting. Um, because you travel so much around the world, and, well, you travel in many different countries, um, and there are different expectations um, and languages and the way we understand the way we interact in different cultures and different societies. Does then performance give you a common language in these different places? Yeah, that's a very nice, uh, nice, nicely put question. Uh, it's not always easy, really. Uh, uh, if because I use also a lot language in my performance, and uh, uh, sometimes I do try to perform in French or German, and I struggle more than I struggle with English, and. Uh, um, so in this terms, um, uh, I, I use language. It's not that I'm using like a composition, the music, right? Uh, in this terms, I cannot call performance being such a media that would give me direct access. There are also places have no history of performance. I was teaching workshops in Albania. There is no history of performance. They have no idea what's that. Uh, there are people that are not prepared for performance, right? Uh, but um, you, you try, you know, you try and uh, um, and see what comes up. It's not always a success story, you know. And sometimes they think, okay, this was not a big deal, right? What was this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I had a question about like um, 
Do you feel a struggle or tension between being a practicing artist and also being an artist activist? Um, do you feel? Do you ever feel like you're being torn apart between those two, and how do you navigate like continuing through your practice within that? Um, I don't, to be honest. I don't because um, I'm not. Um, I don't compromise in my work, so I don't take uh, every exhibition or. Uh, I do uh, resign from certain exhibitions if I think they are like uh, ethically or politically yeah. inappropriate, and uh, or the artists are not well paid, or they're not paid at all, or there are some problems going on. But that's, um, I think, once you have a more offers. Even I get so many offers. This year I'm well off, get a lot of nice offers like this one. <laughs> but it happens also that I get so many offers in which I'm not paid, you know, or really underpaid, or uh, th there is no production behind, or so it's difficult to say no, but sometimes it, it's it's your okay. own decision that you follow and say, okay, I'm not doing this, I'm not, we know contemporary art is a child of injustice, contemporary art is built on, you know, gets budgets from the, the this um, accumulation uh, of budgets, of course it's, uh, but we can still, it's a very important part of our culture and uh, I'm very, I feel privileged to be uh, part of that. And I always try to bring these things together as much as possible. Also in my teaching work, uh, I'm not based at any university, just going around, having a chance to work with students here and there for shorter periods of times and so I try always to bring this, all these ideas together somehow, and uh, um, I don't feel torn apart, if that was the question. And you just had an in, well, incident, or uh, an incident of censorship, just recently, this year, uh, where you walked out of the exhibition. Uh, in yes, Austria. yes, yes, because um, I have a very special relationship with Austria. It's uh, just like they censor me every couple of years, and it's a big issue really there because they are Austria is extremely conservative. Uh, I can say, oh, even my child from Austrian father could not get Austrian citizenship because I was not married to this person when my child was born. It's just like a weird country, right? And uh, Austria, uh, yeah, and uh, it was a project uh, that. Um, was an exhibition project in a very representative venue. Um, economical issues were very problematic, but I thought, okay, this issue was so important to me. It was about 50 years anniversary of the signing of the contract about exchanging of guest workers between former Yugoslavia and Austria. Austria was taking guest workers from Yugoslavia, and this population is a uh, working class in Austria, even now, 50 years later, and it was many, um, 50 years later, and it was also, it has been also historically, as the big parts of the former Yugoslavia were parts of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, so there was this very sp particular relationship, so I wanted to produce a work that dealt with this issue in a critical way, and then uh, whatever I proposed, they first said nice, but then they said, no, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. And I said, sorry, this is censorship, I'm not going to change my work again. You know, I'm not just going to send you some nice photo you can hang in the show. <laughs> if they would say that from the beginning, okay, we want this nice photo in the show, uh, I could say, okay, this uh, important issue, maybe I will do it, you know, but... Uh, in the art system, it's very cr important to be critical towards the context in which you're showing, not about something somewhere there. Yeah. Okay. We have time for one more question. Yes. Um, speaking of censorship, I'm curious about self-censorship. Um, if you ever feel like, um, I mean, I feel like you've been you're quite quite courageous with your work, even if it seems to pose risk of personal harm. Um, but I'm curious as to if, if you ever um, feel like there's work that's important to make, but you feel like you have to censor yourself because of um, political issues to do with you know where you're living or um, 
maybe not being able to return to a country because of certain work you might make, but I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it, I, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about self censorship if that's ever something that comes up for you. I didn't have this issue, to be honest. Uh, or I'm not that I'm aware because we might uh, censor ourselves. Um, I don't know, like uh, if I'm going to show this, I did some works dealing with sexuality, right, and the uh, things, and then I might say, oh, okay, maybe this is maybe uh, uh, maybe this is um, this I shouldn't do. <laughs> but it's a matter of like, are we really? It's it's a very complex process. So I never done it uh, kind of. Um, obviously, like uh, consciously. consciously, but uh, we probably do censor ourselves in many ways. Uh, uh, you know, there are different filters <laughs> going on. Um, uh, I can see now when I have a child, and it uh, was a, a, a really big, ex an important exhibition on homo homosexualities in the uh, German Historical Museum and the Queer Museum in Belgrade. And they asked me to put my photo where you can see my bare breast on the poster, posters around Berlin. And my son was coming to my studio and he said, wow, you have a bare breast in this picture. And I said, yeah, sure, I explained it work and everything. But then uh, I said, that, yeah, they asked me to have it on the billboards. And, uh, and then I thought like, okay, maybe this is not, you know, he would feel, he always like, we go to this museum, he says, do they recognize you? You know, they recognize. So they decided for Castile's work, uh, incredible work, uh, and uh, so I didn't have to make this decision. I said, well, well think about it. So it's, uh, but it's more in the way, um, not in the work itself, but more in a, how we put it in the. Yeah. Okay. Any more? No. Well, thank you. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. John, I wasn't sure if you were raising. I don't yet. really want the uh, the last word on this. It's been incredible to hear you speak to Andrea about all of this. But just to also put in context two things. One, there was there is a very high profile case that has just been resolved in the last week of a Roma family who were living in the basement of a church here for three years. They were Roma activists in Hungary came here, they were going to be deported, they took up sanctuary in the church for three years, they were successfully deported back to Hungary, but they have now just, after three weeks, been granted um, asylum. permission to come asylum back to Canada, so that's uh, good, a good thing. Um, there was another artist who was meant to come not in the context of 7A11D, but to OCAD uh, just in the last, uh, he was meant to be here for two weeks. Um, in an artist residency uh, from Cuba, Luis Manuel Alcantara, and he was denied a visa. And his response, and I would like, I just wanted to kind of bring it up to people here to check it out, because uh, if you go on Facebook and look for his site, he made a kind of fictional diary of every day when he was in, supposedly in Canada. So shot in Cuba, of course it's snowing all the time, he gets off the plane and his uh, sandals and is drinking maple syrup. And, okay. and, um, Tonight I'm going to Nuit Blanche, okay, yeah, now I'm he, listening so to the he, he, he made a fictional diary of, in response because he was also denied a visa. So these, these kinds of questions, that, the third thing I wanted to say was that um, Canada had recently actually been looking at legislation in which people who were not but natural born Canadians but were uh, adopted Canadians could potentially also be deported back to their country of origin even if they had Canadian citizenship. So every country in the world is really uh, climbing down on these, you know, and Canada is absolutely no exception, is really climbing down on these uh, kind of border uh, migration migration issues and, and uh, you know, I think the... Yeah, thank you so much for bringing this up. Uh, uh, I, I would like to say uh, this, we cannot speak for those communities, right? They have to speak for themselves. We have to give them space. We have to give them space to speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. But as, an, as artists, we can show and we should show our solidarity. We should bring those issues more 
uh, you know, like a space to be visible, help to vis more visibility. Mm -hmm. And a shame on Canada because Canada, uh, we in Germany received over one million refugees and Canada 30,000 and you cannot compare the size of the country, compare the wealth and the resources here and there. And uh, on the other side, Hungary is, has a fascist government. Hungary has a, uh, the worst uh, serial killers of Roma people you can imagine. Hungary is not a safe country to deport Roma people. So this is uh, terrible, you know, that you tell me that they didn't deport it there because they really did uh, like a machine gun shot, like uh, bombs thrown in the houses. Yeah, like they were beaten to death. Like this is in Hungary, good morning, you know, in a, you know, against Roma. Yeah. There is an organization here that some of you may know about called No One Is Illegal that works with, uh, you know, resolving some of these issues. So, so um, yeah, I just wanted to put that up there for the local people. And again, it's, uh, it's, I am a little bit distraught, not, not a little bit, but a lot, that Selma couldn't participate in the conversation because she is someone who deals with this, uh, both as a Roman person, but also an, as an artist who deals with these issues. So um, the fact that she didn't get the visa and the fact that she, that the Skype, you know, is not working perfectly is, uh, is a real problem. Um, but having said this, I'm hoping that we will be able to organize her performance on Tuesday so that it does work and that, uh, that you can see her work. Um, either through uh, kind of a live performance, um, digital performance, or through a, an instructional performance. So um, I want to thank you for being here, for putting up with the terrible Skype. And I know Sama was uh, saying that she's sorry, but it's not her fault at all yeah, for the course. Skype not working. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, we will be able to um, get everything organized for Tuesday. So I invite you to come to see her performance. And also, obviously, to come and see Tanya's performance. It's going to be here um, on the corner of McCall and Dundas uh, tomorrow at 2. Um, and also to keep coming to the festival and see uh, some of the other amazing work that we have uh, ready, both today um, and tonight. So this afternoon um, at 4, uh, is it at 4? Uh, at the or? Yes, yeah. yes. So we uh, have a if you're registered, because I think it's full. Okay, it's full. Okay, so we have another, uh, we have a performance that is a uh, small uh, performance at four, and then we tonight we have a series of three performances at our Gary Lane space. So I invite you all to come along, and there is another announcement. I just yes. wanted to say that uh, Selma will, will or will not be performing in the context Tuesday night of Kevin McKenzie, who's sitting right over yes. here. He will also be yeah. uh, performing. That's Tuesday right. Night. So I think uh, Sam and I will have a conversation about how she wants to proceed with the disembodied performance. Uh, but also, actually, we, the three of us, Tanya, Sam and I, have been uh, in conversation because uh, Tanya will be going to Buffalo for a, on, Monday. Uh, on Monday for an artist talk, and all three of us will be there together. Okay. In it live, and we want to do a performance intervention together as a response to this. So, right. can we Skype him? Uh, we can, <laughs> and it's going to be at, the, at Sunny Buffalo, so maybe we can try to Skype in. Uh, at least tape it and then we'll uh, yeah, 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 show yeah, it at, at the idea. festival. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. so we, we'll we will be it. together <laughs> in body and soul on Monday. <laughs> Well, one thing that has been working technically is the Verb Pro TV web stream, which is also at four. Yes, yes. <laughs> Selma, did you hear any of this? Yes. Now it's like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> can you turn on your video at least so I can see you? Try. It's like I can hear everything. Uh, yeah, see, like look how clear, crystal clear. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, it's not. It's not so We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry for not being able to speak to you. Just, I can't understand. I didn't get to use those Skype problems. Like, every problem I can. Oh my gosh. It's just like, it's very hard for me. We know. Yeah. We know. But, but 
you, thank you very much for inviting me and giving me a chance to talk a little bit about my works. Thank you so much. And I'm very looking forward to seeing Tanya and you on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Kevin is uh, right there, who is performing on Tuesday. You guys were supposed to perform to together on the same night. Okay, so. great. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> yeah, what I would like to say, just one more word about Selma's work, because we didn't have so much chance to talk about it, is this, uh, uh, that she works with uh, her own experience and her community experience. And that's uh, like... Uh, uh, diverges from the kind of, um, how to say, uh, bourgeois feminists that are uh, only concerned with their own self. And, uh, and that's very interesting, you know. The, like uh, uh, indigenous women, they, uh, they, they're really concerned with their community and the experience the community has. I think that's very, uh, very amazing. And also uh, what Selma uh, did not get to say, and we had a conversation about this earlier, about what work she wants to present, um, she was going to talk about this foundation for education of Roma children that she started trying to start up as well. So she's doing all the artwork, she's in school, and she's trying to do a foundation. So she's quite involved with, um, with helping um, her own community and working from within it. So thank you all, uh, and we'll see you at, uh, at the festival. Thanks.